Uh, today what we are going to do is, uh, we would be uh, initially talking about uh, the whole uh, process of adjustment, what the challenges are before us as human beings and how uh, we uh, very nicely uh, make a balance between uh, all types of demands that we experience in our life. And uh, finally, we would also be trying to look at uh, things from the viewpoint of normality versus uh, abnormality. Uh, yesterday what we did was, uh, we tried to look at the fact that uh, there was a heavy dominance of the biomedical model uh, in terms of analyzing human behavior. And because of uh, the over emphasis on uh, a certain uh, scientific temperament at the cost of uh, the social context, biomedical model uh, was supposed to be uh, rethought of, uh, people did revise it and towards the end we did discuss that. Uh, uh, even the practice within the medical fraternity as well as uh, within the behavioral sciences uh, did accommodate certain things like uh, preventive medicine, holistic medicine in the medical sciences and uh, uh, positive psychology, health psychology in the behavioral sciences. Today we are going to uh, talk about uh, the adjustment process and uh, as you know that uh, this course is primarily about uh, the psychology of adjustment. No? So, what we would do is that we would try to understand the ingredients of uh, the adjustment process. Then we would be looking at uh, how uh, you know, people are defined uh, with respect to certain parameters and they are designated as uh, normal or not normal or abnormal or subnormal. And uh, while doing that, uh, we would also try to take a couple of uh, extremely socially relevant examples and thereafter we would flow to the whole dynamics of the adjustment process. Now adjustment is defined as a process wherein one builds variations in the behavior. Okay, you need to break down this definition into multiple components. So this process uh, requires you uh, that you should be looking at the variations in the behavior means the behavior will keep on uh, know, uh, changing, it will keep on uh, know, uh, showing certain level of dynamics. And why such type of changes are needed? Because you want to achieve harmony with oneself. Remember one thing, this is not harmony with uh, know, the environment or others, but it is the intra-individual uh, harmony. So you want to maintain harmony with oneself or you want to maintain harmony with others, that is the other possibility or you are trying to maintain harmony with the environment. Okay, so, three major factors, uh, intra-individual harmony, inter-individual harmony and harmony with the environment. And then this harmony is maintained with certain goal and the goal is to maintain the state of equilibrium between the individual and the environment. The primary responsibility of all human beings in terms of uh, you know, delivering the best possible response that is needed by the environment is that you try to strike certain degree of equilibrium. Okay. Means things would be at a normal state and then the moment there is a need, the situation demands you to do something, you simply you know, look at the task, analyze the task, uh, you know, you perform whatever is expected out of you so that you and the environment both remains in a balanced order. Okay. If you do not uh, perform what is needed out of you, the system will uh, know, further put demand either on you or on others and hence the whole harmony will get disturbed for a certain period of time. To strike that harmony, okay, individuals do try to uh, know, build variation within their own behavior. Okay. And uh, striking variation within their own behavior would mean that you in the similar type of situation, you come forward with multiple types of responses based on your own judgment of what would be the most prudent activity to perform in this very situation. Okay. Uh, smaller examples you can take uh, like uh, say, uh, you come to the class, okay. uh, you are trying to uh, look at the projection. Okay, and meanwhile, the person sitting next to you whispers something in your ear. Okay. Now there is a, a environment here, the environment demands you to uh, attend to the lecture. 
<coughs> imagine a case when uh, the instructor is too harsh or your uh, neighbors are too harsh in terms of telling you uh, that you should not disturb us. Now, you will try to achieve harmony in that type of situation. So, even though you heard somebody whispering in your ear, you do not respond to it. Okay. You do not respond to it or the second uh, situation could be uh, that uh, you do whisper, but you make a very delayed type of a response. No? Say you put your hand like this and then you whisper uh, in a delayed fashion and in a much more slower fashion. Third variation, you prefer not to talk, instead you write something uh, you know, on the sheet of the paper. Okay. Likewise, there could be you know, multiple, multiple variations and all these variations are primarily uh, you know, intended to strike that uh, balance with the environment. Now, uh, with all your life experiences that you have till now, you know that uh, besides uh, maintaining equilibrium with the environment, one important task that all of us perform and we are supposed to perform is to maintain that degree of balance with others also. <coughs> you want to maintain a relationship uh, with uh, the others also in the society in a very, very uh, balanced order. And when you uh, do that, okay, you again have to come forward with multiple types of variations in your response. Okay. Now, psychologically, uh, many a times it might be relatively easy to maintain that degree of equilibrium with others, but it is extremely difficult when you find inconsistency within your own self. Means, uh, an example could be that something that does not fit your own value system but the situation expects you to do that. Okay. There is a disharmony between your own two inner constructs, something that you feel doing, but your uh, no moral code of conduct that you have imbibed from your culture, from your family tells you that this is not worth doing. Okay. Such type of conflicting situation can uh, no put heavy toll on the adjustment process and it is uh, no, much more difficult to handle situations like this compared to uh, when you are trying to strike balance with others. So, inter-individual uh, no, situations can be handled relatively easier compared to when you have intra-individual problems. Okay. Now, adjustment process also uh, no, encourages certain changes in order to optimize the relationship. No? You have certain degree of relationship, but then you would try to optimize it to the maximum possible extent. One of the examples we are taking, now we took the example of uh, know somebody whispering in your ear, we take another example uh, of somebody who visits a consultant physician and he is diagnosed with a terminally ill disease. He is told that you are suffering from this. In some cases, uh, doctors are modest not to tell you uh, the time frame that they expect uh, of your survival. Uh, at times, doctors tells the uh, you know, caretakers that perhaps you would survive for 3 months, 6 months. Okay. In certain types of diseases, uh, situation works like this. What could be the possible responses? You are suddenly told that you have been diagnosed with a terminally ill disease. One option that you become tense okay. and becoming tense simply means that you now consider that death is inevitable. It could be today it could be tomorrow, it could be day after tomorrow, it could be after a month, but then it is inevitable. So, you start counting your days now and this makes you extremely tense. The other response that you simply deny it and you say that how can this happen to me? Okay. I have never say for example, study we were taking the example of somebody uh, who, is, who develops HIV infection, we were talking uh, you know, with respect to the comparison between. Uh, certain types of uh, medical diagnosis which has greater social acceptance like diabetes uh, compared to something like uh, HIV infection which does not have social acceptance. Okay. Now, you become uh, 
an individual who starts uh, no, denying the diagnosis and say that how can this happen to me? I cannot develop HIV infection, I never had blood, blood transfusion, I never uh, no, had displayed uh, uh, rampant type of sexual activities, I am not one who have uh, abused the drugs. Okay. So, all the causes that you know can lead to uh, infection of uh, uh, this virus, you say that I have not been involved with any of these and hence you deny it. Or you simply say that fine others can acquire it, how can I? Means, there is a difference between me and others in the society. Or you turn extremely angry, okay. you do not show your anger to others might be that you implode within. No? One form of aggression is that you explode, you show your uh, aggressive burst to others. Other could be that you boil within, you are not expressing yourself and but you still think that uh, why me, you know? there are millions and millions uh, you know, uh, in this country who does things the way I have done. So, why only I should be penalized for it? Why have I been you know, chosen to become uh, an HIV infected patient? So, these are interesting dynamics you know, and in life you would realize in reality if you see you know, how uh, uh, people tend to accept things, how people tend to deny things, how people respond to different things, you will find huge variation and that shows uh, how people are different from each other and what type of strategies are being used in terms of uh, you know, adjusting to the type of challenges that life has put uh, them in front of. I will take two interesting examples, two of the field experiences. Uh, one the case of uh, a mother, I do not know about the father, but uh, the mother who was uh, too sensitive in terms of uh, knowing uh, how uh, psychologically sound her daughter is. Okay. Uh, the daughter I guess was too young, perhaps 8 or 9 years old. And the mother was uh, no, too desperate to know about the IQ level, about other, other psychological parameters, okay, as if you want to have a psychological profile of the child. Okay. A majority in our society never knows many of these uh, characteristics, these traits we do not even think of getting a measure. And then uh, she did consult couple of people, she did ask me also. And then uh, it went to the extent that she finally went to a psychiatrist asking that fine she wants a certain uh, test to be administered on uh, her daughter, okay, certain clinical examination to be performed on her daughter because she wanted to know how sound her daughter is. What took place was that uniformly everybody whom she consulted uh, simply denied saying that why do you find there is a need for it, there is no need for your young daughter to undergo these tests or assessments. No? or any type of clinical observations, there is no need for it. No? Uh, let her lead the life uh, the way she is leading no? and there is no reason why you should be worried about uh, no, a young baby uh, out of no reasons. Now, uh, you suddenly you know you have a daughter and your parenthood propels you, uh, you know, to become over agitated in terms of you know, uh, identifying certain problems that you might be aware of. Second situation and a sad situation. Uh, this was experience I had long back around 10, 12 years back. Uh, with the help of one of the nationalized banks, a mental health checkup program was organized. Okay. And this was organized in a locality uh, which was basically a locality predominated by uh, the weaver community and community which are into uh, no, this type of stuff. No, if not into weaving, then coloring or uh, no middlemen who are involved in see, uh, selling these products. So it was basically of a lower socio-economic strata, and that locality was deliberately identified for this camp because uh, it was uh, realized that this locality has the highest number of intellectually disabled children. Okay, now intellectual disability has nothing to do with socio-economic condition. But it is just a chance factor that many families there were uh, know, identified to have uh, children uh, with intellectual impairment. This camp was organized and uh, there were uh, know, a couple of uh, doctors who were administering one or the other type of tests. There were uh, a few psychologists trying to administer psychological uh, assessments. Uh, there were also some officials from uh, the 
uh, sponsor who were primarily uh, you know, distributing medicines, which the doctors prescribed free of cost, or uh, in certain cases where you know uh, training was a possibility, they were promised that you will be giving given a sieving machine, you know, so that you can you know work at your home and you can earn bread for yourself. Uh, the posters, the banners, they were displayed uh, you know 10, 15 days in advance, and but there was a very thin appearance. Okay, not many uh, you know, uh, children came, uh, not many parents came. So, uh, although this full uh, team sat for uh, uh, the full day, there was a very thin population, given the fact that uh, there was an inside report that uh, this uh, area has a large number of uh, intellectually impaired children. Now, once uh, these uh, free medicines were distributed and certain uh, other other stuffs were distributed and promise of sewing machine was made, okay. by evening by the time this whole team was about to leave a large number of uh, you know, people started pouring in okay. and they were interested uh, you know, of getting whatsoever is available free of cost. Okay. And this was to my utmost surprise. No? that what you are interested is not in the welfare of your own child, but what you are interested getting is whatever comes to you at minimal cost or at zero cost. Okay, minimal cost because uh, you would be leaving some of the tasks that you otherwise would have performed. So, you left that activity and came to the site of the camp okay. and the stuffs are being uh, given uh, free of cost and therefore, uh, you, know, you start demanding for it. And the field workers later on told us that you know uh, for 2, 3 weeks they had a tough time going to the field, because every time people will catch hold of them and ask uh, when is the next camp going to be held. This is a very uh, amazing type of uh, experience, but the reason why we are discussing these two examples here is that in one case situation does not exist. Okay. But then you try to uh, know, make a microscopic analysis of the situation and you try to extract okay, things before it can occur. In the other case, symptoms are glaringly visible and you show a tendency to deny it. Uh, let me tell you another interesting story, a similar type of a story. Uh, when uh, the data for the census was being uh, you know, taken you know that uh, you know, census data are collected every 10 years. No? So, last time when the census data was being collected, uh, government has been struggling uh, to get accurate data of uh, people with different types of uh, problems, no? right from uh, physical disability to intellectual disability. Okay. And a tendency has been found uh, that people would uh, simply say uh, that even though they have children with one or the other type of uh, disability in their uh, house, they would simply deny that I do not have any child like that. From the primary source means from the parents mouth you hear that I do not have a child like that. Uh, from the neighbors from other key uh, sources you uh, come to know that yes, there is one child who is hard of hearing, there is one child who is you uh, know uh, physically crippled, there is one child who is intellectually disabled, but the primary sources will always try to deny that. Uh, and if you talk to them in person, they will give you n number of reasons why they do this. One uh, another issue uh, which has to do with it and that has to do with everybody uh, know, uh, who is a member of the society, uh, in uh, that a good number of people in our community, either they show the tendency to deny the diagnosis or it also has been found that uh, no, you delay either the treatment process or the prevention process. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, it has been observed, uh, the doctors will tell you that it has been observed that uh, many women once they conceive, they report to the clinic much later okay. and therefore, the first few months uh, goes waste. The, even though you have certain things which are supposed to be delivered to uh, these women free of cost at the local uh, by the local medical authorities. Okay, they do not get this benefit because you do not report to uh, the health centers at proper time. Second, 
which has both the sides. No? Uh, the tendency of denial we were talking right now, uh, that very fact that you are diagnosed with one problem and then uh, you uh, just tell the doctor or you can uh, know, uh, tell others that fine, I will go for a second opinion. So, you meet a doctor, the doctor diagnoses you with one type of a problem okay, uh, and then you seek opinion from the second medical expert. Similarly, you go for a psychological assessment, you are diagnosed with something, you go for a second ass uh, assessment by some other consultant, which is fine. Okay. Problem comes when uh, you come to know the diagnosis, but then you show extreme of denial, you do not accept it. Come on, come on, I have uh, many children developed like this, no? with time it will happen, gradually it will happen, one day it will happen and that day usually never comes mostly it never comes. We have alternate type of practices. So, it is not only that you deny uh, know the diagnosis made by some expert, rather you go in some other direction. I will give you a true example. A family uh, which had two consecutive child uh, with you know, speech and auditory problems. So, they could neither hear, they could not speak. Both the parents, they uh, know, kept on denying it, saying that okay, there are children who develop these abilities little late in their life. Okay. So, the critical period was gone. They went to the doctor and the doctor uh, know, tell them, uh, told them that find the uh, circumference of the head of uh, the babies are uh, know, uh, much more smaller compared to what the normal uh, head circumference is and therefore, there seems to be uh, some uh, neurological issue behind this, which should be deeply examined. Okay. Meanwhile, the parents come to know from some source that if you and this is all false type of things, I must tell you right in the beginning before I tell you what they were prescribed. They were told that you uh, uh, go to a banyan tree okay, early in the morning, pluck one leaf, green leaf from the tree. Okay. Uh, cook a small amount of porridge of this size, no, which can be engulfed in just one go. Okay. Put it on the leaf of the banyan tree and then make your child eat it. Now, completely from neurological examination to porridge on a banyan tree, it is completely weird type of combination, but this parents uh, know they delayed neurological examination for more than two years. I know this case very closely. Okay. But for these two years, they did use the banyan tree leaf. Okay. So, the banyan tree lost many of its leaf, cut see these parents, okay. but the child never got uh, know the medical assistance that it should have got okay, right in the beginning when uh, the parents were advised uh, to undergo certain neurological tests. So, uh, now, uh, we, you, could, you will find 100 types of examples okay, in and around you, where you would realize that there are uh, no hundreds types of uh, possible reactions and uh, no we do give uh, many many types of uh, responses some responses which can be classified to be perfectly okay minus the fact that it has uh, no a wider range some type of uh, no reactions uh, which are very difficult to accept it doesn't seem rational now psychological adjustment is the critical uh, processes uh, that will help the person achieve harmony with his or her current state. Okay. Now, ex, uh, the example that we took of the terminal ill disease and three possible respond, uh, reactions that you deny you ex, uh, or if you do not deny, then you become tense. If you do not become tense or uh, deny, then you uh, turn to be angry. Why is it me? The process of psychological adjustment Okay, demands that you should finally achieve harmony with your current state. So, if the truth at this time is that you have been diagnosed with a disease, okay, develop that uh, know, grand feeling within you to accept whatever is true. Okay. So, finally, the, ad, the outcome of the adjustment process would be that, we, that it will allow you to accept things the way they are. Having said that, it will also tell you that uh, although you have accepted the current state, 
there is always a possibility of betterment. Satisfaction of psychological needs through social networks have also been found to facilitate social and cultural adjustment. Okay. Now, you try to satisfy your psychological needs not through your own endeavors, but also through your social networks, no? family as a unit, friends as a unit. Okay. Uh, there are several several types of uh, other uh, institutional mechanisms of uh, you know, uh, deriving such type of psychological needs. The whole uh, literature in psychology uh, is full of nowadays uh, uh, with research on uh, uh, spiritual inclination or spiritual practices which works as healing forces. Okay. Which uh, you will find a good number of research which talks about your community involvement okay, that acts as a buffer when you are yourself in a great amount of distress. Okay. So, you involve with the community task and that uh, you know, serves another type of psychological need. You uh, get involved with some type of spiritual activities and it starts serving uh, satisfying your psychological need. And then there are certain social and uh, cultural issues that also you need to take into account when you are trying to adjust. We will take many of these examples in the coming days. Okay. And human beings learn this whole dynamics of the network from these experiences. No? You have your uh, cultural baggage, you have your social uh, ethos, you have your uh, family system and there are uh, good networks that you develop, you know, uh, friends with whom you love to play, friends with whom you want to uh, share your grief, remorse or your fantasies, uh, friends with whom uh, you tend to share your academic enterprise. Okay. Uh, it need not be an animate uh, body, but then say consider uh, you know, uh, your care, your passion for some bigger cause. Say you are involved in uh, saving the trees, you are involved in planting uh, in planting new trees, you are involved in watering the trees which are uh, you know, uh, put in your area. Uh, you are involved in many, many types of things. You have developed a couple of hobbies that you find very, very passionate about. Now, all these things you know they develop a you know, network around you and this network works as a consolidating force which strengthens your uh, you know, uh, need for satisfying uh, some of the issues uh, that bothers you. It also provides you the strength to face certain adversities that you uh, might encounter in life. It also gives you certain guiding principles which you can take forward when you are thinking of a possible reaction in a given situation. Now, changes in the environment triggers the interpersonal activities that can help achieve uh, these needs. No? And this serves two purposes, meeting needs in the change environment. Okay, so, you once you have a manipulation in the environment, there is a new demand that has been put forward before you. Okay. So, you tend to meet these needs and at the same time, it increases the expectancy of meeting needs in the future. No? So, if a new demand has come in front of you and you have been able to satisfy it. Okay. Then besides fulfilling the need, you also know that next time if similar type of challenge comes or even if little uh, more severe challenge comes in front of me, I am capable of handling it. Okay. And therefore, adjustment process engages both inner inner as well as inner outer relationship. So, inner inner is uh, you and say your belief system, your value system, your thoughts, your feelings, okay. those are inner inner relationships as well as inner outer relationship. No? So, you and people in the environment and this relationship interestingly can be both, it can be harmonious, it could be conflicting. Okay. And this is you know, the whole uh, you know, uh, uh, propelling force that makes the whole adjustment process extremely dynamic. Okay. In psychology, we talk about three core issues, no? cognitive, cognitive and affective. Cognitive is uh, your uh, thought process, okay. the way you think, the way you uh, know, derive information from your past experiences means memory dependent activities. Your affective processes, affective is your feeling component and cognitive is your action. So, cognitive cognitive and affective, all these three pillars, they should uh, know, uh, work in harmony with each other. Means, 
you do what you feel, you do and feel what you think. So, all these three things they synchronize. Okay. Problem would come when you have uh, no disharmony between one or two of these components, means you do something that you do not feel doing. Okay. Like uh, you are uh, given this course in HSS uh, lottery, although you hate this course like anything. Okay. So, you are made to do something that you do not like. Okay. Similarly, there could be uh, no all types of permutation combination, no? when you uh, feel something else, but you uh, do something else. You feel and think differently, your thought and your feeling does not match together, many times it happens in life. So, those are those conflicting situations, which will you know always make your whole adjustment process extremely dynamic. And the best part of it is that uh, with little effort and with time, okay, most of us in most of the situations succeed maintaining that harmony. Now, the harmony and conflict within and among one's behavior, value belief system, affective reactions okay, and so forth, they work as our major determinants. No? So, unless you have uh, no harmony between them, okay, your adjustment will be at stake and the moment you have conflict between them, again your adjustment will be at stake. Okay. And hence, it is uh, no, something like walking on a tight rope. You must have seen people know uh, with a stick in their hand and uh, walking on a thin rope okay, when they try to strike that balance. Adjustment can be to a greater extent equated with that type of situation. No? That situation always demands you to strike a balance and you always try to do uh, it most of the times successfully. Sometimes uh, we might fail, uh, but remember one thing that uh, success in terms of coming forward with a response. Okay, uh, is largely achieved because we there is a possibility of wide degree of uh, response. No, there is a great variation. Okay, it's not that you have to. The first step has come here, so the second step also has to come at the same point. It's not like that. No, it can deviate, and to certain degree, deviations are accepted. Uh, on the, in the next topic, after we discuss normality, we would be talking about you know uh, this type of uh, range, you know, and the possible deviation. The very understanding of this purpose also makes us appreciate whether the person is adjusted or not. Discordance and inconsistency within and among these determinants is interpreted as maladjustment. No? So, once you have uh, no uh, inconsistency between your say behavior, belief system, affective reactions. So, basically the cognitive, quantitative and the affective components, okay, those are uh, no likely to be interpreted as indicators of maladjustment that you are not able to adjust. So, adjustment involves an inner inner as well as an inner outer relationship, okay, this we have discussed and adjustment also demands that one should strike balance between the needs and environmental obstacles. So, it can be understood like this uh, that you have certain motives okay, and in your initial attempt you experience a barrier. You can take any type of example, a small child okay, uh, uh, trying to get a chocolate okay, and there are hundred barriers in front of him. The older sibling does not allow him to have the chocolate. Okay. Parents advise that no, no, you eat uh, too much of chocolate and it will uh, no, uh, develop cavity. So, parent becomes an obstacle, the shop is closed, the third obstacle. Okay. Uh, parents do not give you the money, fourth obstacle, you are too young to go alone to the shop, fifth obstacle, you go to the shop with somebody and it is closed, sixth obstacle. You can think of hundreds of obstacles for any, any, anything in life, okay. the smallest of the activity and you will have hundreds of obstacles. Now, at the initial step what happens, once you have a barrier that you experience for a given motive, okay, you learn that okay, this does not succeed, that does not succeed, third also, fourth also, but one or more than one will succeed. And then you know, okay. so rest are, uh, are the uh, know, uh, endeavors that does not lead to success, this succeeds. 
So, next time onwards, once you have a, a motive, you know that five of the behaviors are not to be done behavior. So, you do not replicate them. Behavior that, does, that did not lead you uh, know, attain the goal, okay. you stop uh, doing that, repeating them and therefore, you minimize the time involved, you also minimize the energy involved and in that process, you also minimize the conflict involved. Okay. So, if I cannot surpass the uh, advisory of my parents, there is no point negotiating with my parents. Okay. If my father is every time going to tell me no, 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 no more chocolates, okay, you will have cavity, look at your uh, older sibling, then what is the point in talking to the father, go to the mother. Okay. So, you know how to bypass the obstacle, mother in front of father again might say that no, 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 father has told no to you, so please go, okay. but mother in the absence of father might allow. So, you know there is a variation in the response, no? mother can be approached, but not in presence of the father. Okay. And then suddenly you come to know that mother and father you have were struggling with them for a chocolate, but then the grandfather comes with the chocolate and tells you low better. And then you say, okay, grandfather can bypass both of them. Okay. So, you know how to uh, know encounter the barriers that you experience in life. In initial attempts, we struggle more, subsequently we struggle little less, but with more and more of experience of life, okay, uh, our responses gradually becomes much more perfect. Okay. And hence, uh, no one or two strikes and we finally attain our goal. But again I would say that adjustment process has been oversimplified when we say this. Okay. There could be situations where it is extremely difficult, take your own examples. You were, I am taking a hypothetical example, maybe some of you might fit into this, I do not know. Uh, say you were born down south, say you were born in Chennai, okay. uh, studied in Chennai, did coaching in Hyderabad, came to IIT Kanpur. You never got a chance to have uh, know, uh, the type of food that are provided in this uh, mess. Okay. Your hostel mess provides a food that you never tasted in your life. The roommate you got was somebody who you have never interacted with. Okay. Say your uh, friend comes from extreme north, north eastern part of the country. Okay you realize that both of you does not match in terms of your language, you have extreme difficulty understanding both English and Hindi. You have difficulty having all types of chapatis, uh, rice, dal and vegetables full of potatoes served in the hostel mess. Okay. You have extreme difficulty you know coming to 8 o'clock class in the chilled winter morning. Okay. And then you say that I never uh, ever uh, had bought a sweater, because uh, there I never experienced that chilled winter, I did not experience winter at all. Here the winter is much more uh, know, than what we usually think of winter. And overall the institute asked me to come uh, at 8 o'clock okay, and the instructor says you have to sign this paper, okay, which is a documentary evidence whether you came to the class or not. Okay. There could be many, many such situations where initial or subsequent barriers you do not know how to handle. Okay. So, people uh, know at times you come forward with issues like this. Imagine situation, you completed your B tech, you now go to Europe, okay. chilled winter. Say for example, you went to Sweden, you went to Norway to Finland countries which are otherwise extremely cold round the year. Okay. And what is usually summer for us is, uh, sorry winter for us is summer for them. Okay. And then uh, you, know, you have to accommodate. Okay. Now, the weather is not bad, but it is horrible throughout the year. There is a foreign language that you are minimally aware of or not at all aware of. There is, there are food practices uh, that you are, you again find very weird and then you have limited money with you. Okay, your passport says single entry visa. No? So, you cannot even go back to Chennai, have some food and come back. 
Okay. You do not have a choice and then you have limited money, your scholarship tells you that only these many euros per month. And above all you realize that there are several things that are completely you know, uh, incompetent, uh, incompatible uh, in terms of your cultural acceptance, in terms of your value belief system accommodation. For example, many people will uh, share this shock with you, waters are much more expensive compared to bears in many of these countries. You can afford to have beer, but you cannot afford to have water there every day and you have limited money, you have single entry visa, what to do now. Okay. And means what I am trying to say is that you have to adjust and the situations are you know, becoming much and much difficult for you know. and whatever you try it is very difficult. The good part of it is that uh, usually human beings are many much more intelligent in terms of finding out a way out. I can give you a true example minus the name okay, and the details. A person uh, know who was uh, born in one of the southern states, uh, belonged to a certain type of a family which was completely, completely, completely uh, know against uh, know the non-vegetarian food and uh, alcohol and stuffs like this. Okay. Uh, they had a different protocol that was supposed to be followed every morning when you leave your bed. He was born in that type of an environment and finally, when he had to stay for a couple of years in Europe. He had extremely tough time and the intelligent compromise that he came forward with was once I am in the flight, once I have taken off, so then I can have whatever is served in the flight. Okay. Once I am in Europe, I okay, will uh, behave the way Europeans do, okay. but once my flight touches down the Indian soil, I am as pure as I was you know, uh, according to my uh, family. Uh, value, belief and practice uh, patterns. These are intelligent compromises, no? because you have to finally, strike a balance between what your immediate environment demands you to do and you also have to take into account your own behavior, your own value belief system, your own thought processes, all of these has to be taken into account and then adjustment has to be made. Okay. So, uh, this was all about the adjustment process. So, we will stop here. Uh, tomorrow when we uh, meet, we would be talking about uh, perhaps an interesting topic, uh, I do not know whether the earlier two discussions were equally interesting or not. We would be talking about normality, how do we uh, define normality okay. and we would be uh, uh, talking about some, uh, some, some type of uh, social practices. Uh, that uh, usually we ignore or many of us are not aware of or we do not see it uh, happening in and around us uh, very frequently. Okay. So, we would be uh, know talking about uh, how norms are derived, how behaviors are fitted into those norms, who decides the norm, who is uh, supposed to comply to those norms and then finally, who defines what is normal. Okay. Uh, there is an interesting possibility in this case. No? What we would do is that we would take a scientific viewpoint, uh, we would take a, of course, a psychological viewpoint, we would touch upon the sociological viewpoint, we would also touch little bit about on the legal viewpoint, but you can also take it to a philosophical discourse, okay. who is sane, what is sanity, what is insane, who is not uh, sane who is normal, who is abnormal, who defines it and stuffs like this. This we will be taking up tomorrow. Okay.